Okay, so let's take a look at uh, eukaryotic cells next. So eukaryotic cells are cells that contain a nucleus. So they can be singular or multicellular organisms, um, and they're gonna range anywhere from 10 micrometers to one millimeter, all right? Uh, so this includes all the eukarya in terms of life, so that are plants, animals, fungi, and those protists, those single cell uh, eukaryotic organisms. So let's talk off, or let's start off uh, with what makes them eukaryotic cells, and that is the nucleus. So here is the nucleus. So the nucleus is a structure within the, uh, the cell that houses uh, the genetic material, all right? Uh, and because it houses the genetic material, it's essentially the control center of the cell. If we go to this next picture, this is showing of a plant here. So you can see the nucleus there, um, showing different other organisms there. All right, so here is the nucleus, just a blow up of the nucleus there. When you look inside of the nucleus, you're gonna see this hair-like structures in there. So you're seeing all these different fibers moving this way and that, and that is trying to show chromatin. These are loose strands of DNA and a protein known as histones. And so this is trying to show this right here. So here, the like blue line there is the DNA, the purple stuff are the, are the histones, and so the DNA wraps around this, okay? So this is our normal form of DNA in our cell. So this is the form of DNA when the cell is not actively divided. When the cell is gonna get ready to divide, what we do is we package up that DNA into chromosomes. So chromosomes are coiled strands of DNA and histones. Essentially, you can think of them as packages of DNA, right? So this is a form of DNA when the cell is actively divided. In humans, we have 46 packages of DNA. So we package it up 46 ways. Now, I do want to point out here, right? So chromatin and chromosomes are the same, is the same thing, just different forms of the same thing, right? So chromosomes are like if you're gonna move, right? So if you're gonna move, you put everything into boxes, you package it up, and then you move it, right? You know, just grab some socks out of a sock drawer or a lamp and a toaster on the way out of the house and throw it into the back of your car. You put stuff into boxes and then you move it. That's the chromosomes. And then when you get to your new house, right, what you do is you unpack. You take things out of the boxes and you put it into the places in which you can use it. And that what is what the chromatin is. So it spread out the DNA, so uh, now it's available for use. Okay, so also here's the nuclear envelope, and this is the nuclear envelope right there. That is the boundary of the nucleus, and it's gonna regulate what enters and exits the nucleus. Next, within here is this darker area there, and that's called the nucleolus. And so this is a structure within the nucleus uh, that makes ribosomes. And if you remember, ribosomes make proteins. So that nucleolus there is just made of chromatin. It's just where the chromatin is more dense. Okay, now let's move on to the endomembrane system. So if we go back to, let's go to this picture here. Here's our nucleus. And you're seeing a bunch of organelles around that nucleus. Most of those are part of the endomembrane system. So these are organelles composed of membrane. So the first is the largest one that you see here in blue. And that is the endoplasmic reticulum, or abbreviated ER. So this is a series of uh, highly folded membranes. And there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum. So one that you see here with a bunch of ribosomes on it, that is known as the rough ER. And the one over here, more tubular, uh, and you don't see ribosomes on that, that is known as a smooth ER, smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So if we go to this picture, it just shows it a little larger here. All right, so the rough endoplasmic reticulum, this is an organelle that's gonna package proteins within vesicles. Now, a vesicle is a small membrane sac. So if we look here, that's trying to show a vesicle there. Literally, if we were to peer inside of a cell and see a vesicle, it would look like a bubble with some stuff in it, okay? So, rough ER is called rough because it has, it's studded with all those uh, ribosomes on there, all right? So as I said, a vesicle is a small membrane sac, right? So off of the, and connected to that rough endoplasmic reticulum is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So this is an organelle that synthesizes lipids. So lipids are fats and oils, and another thing that it's a lipid are phospholipids. So the, by the smooth endoplasmic reticulum being attached to the rough ER, 
is that the rough ER, with those ribosomes attached to it, they're going to make proteins, they're going to package those proteins into vessels, small membranous sacs. Those, uh, that phospholipids to make that membrane is made by the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so this is just a picture, of uh, an actual picture of the rough endoplasmic reticulum with those ribosomes on it. We go to the next picture here, we see this structure there, that is the Golgi apparatus. It's named after Emilio Golgi, the guy who discovered it. So um, this is an organelle that's gonna modify proteins from the rough endoplasmic reticulum. All right, so if we go to this picture, it just shows this as well. So here are transport vesicles from the rough ER that come into the Golgi apparatus, and they're gonna be modified in some way. So meaning we're gonna add, you know, um, a sugar group to it or a lipid group or something like that, okay? And this is showing like the whole process here. So the rough ER, it's got, those ribosomes are gonna make proteins. Uh, the rough ER is gonna pack those into the vesicles and then they can go to the Golgi apparatus and there uh, they can be modified. And this is showing those products like leaving the cell. All right, now let's take a look at lysosomes. So this is showing a picture of a lysosome. So lysosomes are vesicles that contain digestive enzymes. All right, these are actually made by the Golgi apparatus. All right, and so what lysosomes do is they can break down uh, bacteria, uh, old organelles, or debris that gets into the cell. So what we see here, so if our cell here engulfs a bacterium, that lysosome will fuse with that bacterium in that vesicle, and those digestive enzymes are gonna break that down. Okay, this is showing it again here uh, with uh, an old organelle that we're going to break down. Now, uh, lysosomes are used for the process known as apoptesis. Apoptesis is programmed cell death. So this is used in development. So, uh, so this is showing us early on in development with our hand here. And as you can see, we just produce like these fleshy folds. And then what happens in these cells that are in between the fingers is those cells fill up with lysosomes, the lysosomes disrupt, and those digestive enzymes are gonna kill those cells. And so this is a major thing that we do in development, and it's gonna sculpt limbs and organs. All right, next are peroxisomes. So this is showing a peroxisome. So peroxisomes are vesicles that break down, or that contain enzymes that break down poisons. So perox, that first part there, perox, thinks of peroxides, right? So through our metabolism, we produce peroxides and alcohols. And so by having these peroxisomes in our cells, those are gonna absorb those poisons, and so uh, they don't develop in toxic levels for us, right? So we all know, like, um, you know, I don't know when you were a kid, but when I was a kid, uh, if I got a cut on my leg, my mom would pour hydrogen peroxide on there to kill any of the bacteria, right? A lot of mouthwashes used to contain alcohols in there to kill the bacteria in your mouth. Think about the Germex as well, you know, the, the Purell stuff that you put on your hands, right? It's alcohol in there. So we know these things can be toxins at the right levels and in the right locations. So those peroxisomes prevent that uh, accumulation of those toxins. All right. Now let's take a look at uh, vacuoles. So vacuoles are large membranous sacs. So the first one here is a contractile vacuole. So contractile vacuoles are vacuoles that remove excess water from a cell. And these are found in protists or protozoans found in fresh water, all right? So these little guys found in fresh water environments, lakes, ponds, streams around here, okay? What happens here is water comes into their cell by osmosis, which we're gonna talk about osmosis next chapter, so don't worry about that. But water will constantly move into their cell. And so what they do is they collect this water into these contractile vacuoles. And as the name implies, they're gonna contract this every so often. And by squeezing that, you see these little tubes here, that's gonna push water out of those tubes outside of the cell. And they have to constantly do this, otherwise these little cells could literally explode. All right, so next, let's look at the central vacuole. So central vacuoles, uh, this is an organelle uh, that stores water in plant cells. All right, so this is showing a central vacuole here. We go to this picture, there's a central vacuole there. Here's another one. This is, has a very large central vacuole right there, okay? 
So plants really like to put a lot of water in their central vacuole, and then that water pressure there is gonna push up against their cell wall, and it's gonna make them stand up nice and straight. Uh, they can also store wastes here, or pigments, or toxins. All right, now let's move on to energy-related organelles. So energy-related organelles are chloroplasts and mitochondria. So on this picture, you can see some chloroplasts. All these little green guys here are chloroplasts. All right, so if we go uh, to, let's go back to this picture here. This is trying to show chloroplasts there. So if we go back to this picture, here's a blow up of a chloroplast. So a chloroplast is an organelle in which photosynthesis takes place. All right, this is found in algae and in plants. All right, so one of the things that we see with chloroplasts is they're double membrane. They have two membranes there, all right? And so also they have a, a kind of jelly-like fluid in here and that is called stroma. So this is a stroma, not all these structures here. All of these structures here are thylakoids. So those are structures that absorb light energy. So let's get to some interesting things about uh, chloroplasts. Is that chloroplasts, they contain their own ribosomes, they contain their own DNA, and they contain their own RNA. So they can make their own proteins. So they're like a smaller cell within a larger cell. So we're gonna come back to that here at the end of this chapter. Now let's move on to mitochondria. Mitochondria are, is an organelle in which aerobic respiration occurs. Now, aerobic respiration, uh, so let's back up. I didn't mention photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is where plants and algae take carbon dioxide and water, and they're gonna make organic molecules, specifically glucose, all right? And also, they're gonna make oxygen. Now, in aerobic respiration, we're gonna do the opposite of that. So we're gonna break down organic molecules, mostly glucose, using oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. And now you've just heard why we breathe. We take in oxygen to break down glucose so our cells can have energy. And where this occurs in us is in the mitochondria. So the mitochondria is an organelle in which aerobic respiration takes place. So the main thing that's gonna happen here is we're gonna break down glucose for cellular energy or ATP. Uh, mitochondria are found in most eukarya. They're found in all plants, all animals, all fungi. They're found in most of the protists. So there are some protists, so single-celled organisms that have a nucleus that don't have mitochondria. All right, once again, they're double membrane, just like what we saw with chloroplasts. All right, so on that inner membrane though, that inner membrane has all these folds in it, and all those folds are called cristae. So these are folds in that inner membrane. So why would it have all of this highly folded membrane? Well, a lot of enzymes are put on to, uh, are, are put on to membrane. So if we can have more membrane, we can have more enzymes. If we have more enzymes, we can have more chemical reactions. And so that's why we have all, the uh, mitochondria have that highly folded inner membrane. It's, it increases the amount of uh, chemical reactions that can occur there. All right, inside of that is called the matrix. So this is a jelly-like fluid uh, within the inner membrane of a mitochondria. Once again, it's similar to cytoplasm. What we also find in here, as you can see, they have, uh, mitochondria have their own DNA, they have their own RNA, they have their own ribosomes, and they can make their own proteins. Once again, mitochondria, kind of like little cells within a bigger cell.